This is Moore's Law. It shows that every year, computer power doubles in power every year. It's a line that goes exponentially high. Now it is flattening out. Why? Because transistors are so small, they're approaching the size of atoms. Atoms. At that point, you get leakage. You don't know where the electron is anymore because of the quantum principle, and everything collapses. This curve is now flattening out. The nations of the world realize that unless they go to the next stage, Silicon Valley and all the industries based on computers could become a rust belt. So this man on the left, Richard Feynman, after World War II, predicted that eventually Moore's Law and digital computers will collapse. We have to go to the next level. The next level is the atom. We have to be able to compute with the atom itself to create new industries, medicine, science, all that stuff depended upon calculating on atoms. Now look at the upper right. On the upper right, we have the electron shells of hydrogen. It's electrons in waves. Now, as we said before, Alan Turing created the digital revolution. Everything depends on zeros and ones, zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Mother Nature use zeros and ones, zeros and ones, zeros and ones? No. As far as we can tell in the entire universe, the only place where you have zeros and ones, zeros and ones, zeros and ones, is on the Earth. Mother Nature uses a different language to communicate. On the upper right, you see electron waves. These electron waves create molecules. These molecules in turn create viruses and cells. They create your body. Nowhere do we see digital zeros and ones, zeros and ones. So Richard Feynman said, we have to construct a quantum computer, a computer that computes on atoms and not zeros and ones. That is not the language of nature. When you go outside and you see flowers, you see leaves, you see forests, what are they? They're quantum computers. They're converting sunlight through photosynthesis into sugars by taking carbon dioxide, merging it with light to create sugars and oxygen that you breathe. Flowers do that. In other words, flowers, in some sense, are quantum computers. Now, how difficult it is, is it to compute on an atom? Well, take a look at this. Let's say this is an electron. You put an electron in a magnetic field. And what happens to the electron? It aligns either up or down. It spins this way or it spins this way because all atoms spin, okay? This is one, this is zero. This is how we compute with electrons. This is one, this is zero. Now let's look at Mother Nature. Does Mother Nature use zero and one? No. It uses every single angle in between, simultaneously calculating on all possible angles. Now, how many numbers are there between zeros and ones? Infinite. There's an infinite number of numbers between zero and one. Therefore, immediately you know the answer. How much more powerful is a quantum computer compared to a digital computer? And the answer is infinitely more powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the language of the universe, the language of Mother Nature.